Uh, started out coaching in 1992, spent a lot of time in the lacrosse area, uh, working for Roger Herring at his O-line, D-line camp, and then doing the circuit between um, lacrosse, River Falls, Whitewater. Uh, had the opportunity to play at Whitewater through the late 80s and early 90s. So got into the coaching profession, been doing it for over 20 years. So uh, anytime I get an opportunity to speak, um, I take it as a privilege. Plus it gets me out of the house. So, which isn't always that bad. So <clears throat> how we started out with this program or how we started out with this piece of equipment. Um, a player of mine that was with me ever seen case my first year back in 94 uh, was my first All-State kid and captain for me. His name was Jeff Krause. And he went on to become a banker. He coached me for two years. He's a football junkie, him and his dad. And his dad was an engineer for Abbott Laboratories. So they actually came up with this prototype. And it kind of came from, as you all know, at coaching clinics, usually the best information you get is usually after sessions and some type of establishment written on a napkin. So the sketch for this came at a coaching clinic on a napkin. And what it is, I had asked Jeff, he goes, you know, I want a pad with arms. Being a D-line guy, I wanted something that my guys could use and we could demonstrate and wrap without them getting injured. Because a lot of the stuff that we do is hand-to-hand -hand combat. We do a lot of striking, we do a lot of hand placement on the breastplate, kids are getting nicked up and they're not going 100%. Because number one, they don't want to get hurt. Number two, they don't want to hurt their body. So, Fast forward three years ago, Jeff and his dad had come up to me and said, would you like to sell these pads as a coach? And this is what, kind of what they came up with. So, you know, we had some moderate success the first couple of years. Well, last year, we probably picked up, we had doubled in sales, but we had picked up the Packers. Every team in the Big Ten besides Indiana and Northwestern, um, J.J. Watt is using it in the offseason at a training facility down in uh, Pewaukee. So what we started to think about when we asked guys, because we're always trying to change things up, what would make it more realistic? What would make it more beneficial for us to use? So what we did is we made shoulder pads and a jersey. And with this, now we put specific targets on it. So everything that's on the front of this jersey is pretty much there for a reason. We put the two X's in here because we want that for hand placement for the offensive and defensive linemen. We put the name across the front because we want to make sure our kids' pad level or their head is below that breastplate, okay, or right there is where we want their eyes. And then we added three points of contact in the back as far as where they can grab onto it. Well, the nice thing about this is as far as pad level-wise goes, you might have a guy 6'4", you might have a guy 5'9". On a sled, it's stationary. It doesn't move. But with the pad, I can adjust the pad level. Not only that, especially with my defensive linemen, I can ride them out instead of just them just hitting a pad with no arms or any type of separation. They actually have resistance all the way through whatever drill that we're going to do. Well, now we started to find out not only is it good for offensive and defensive linemen, but it was fantastic for receivers and their stock blocking and also their releases because these arms are steel springs covered with foam. And the foam that goes over the top of these are actually noodles that you get at Walmart. And we cover them up with a real stiff vinyl that they use for uh, sales. It's almost like roofing. So when you hit this, you see the immediate resistance. Now, if you're doing that on a, a live person, that doesn't feel too good. All right, so what we found was, not only was it great for the line play, but also linebackers, running backs, DBs, receivers, just about everybody but quarterbacks and kickers. And I don't even talk to quarterbacks and kickers, so it really doesn't make a difference anyway. So. What we did was we had shot a lot of video over the last few <coughs> years. You can actually go to the site, crossco.com, and you can see every individual position broken down with some drills. And we've also added some drills to it because as we talk to coaches, we find out what they're using and how they use it. Tom had said that his receivers coach is using a lot for their stock blocking and things like that. And now with the innovation of the pistol and things of that nature, your DBs and receivers have to really get used to that one-on-one -on -one play. You know, if they've got a guy coming up in stock blocking, you got to make sure that their hand position is right, you got to make sure that their, their face is on the right side, and DBs have to be able to get off of a block and shed. So we've seen a tremendous amount of, uh, I would say, innovation and coaching technique. Now, one of the things that we had talked about is we're, at our staff at Greenfield, we're really pretty much into technique and fundamentals. 
obviously we run a pretty sophisticated offense, but everything's predicated by reps. We don't have the numbers that a lot of schools have, and I would assume a lot of people up here don't have real big numbers. So what this allows us to do is when we go our inside run game for 20 minutes, we actually have these guys up front and the linebackers have them too. So what it does is we can service ourselves and then the other guys can work on what they have to work on as well. And we're getting reps as close to live as possible. Because, you know, if you've just got a guy standing there holding a bag, there is no separation where they're at. You know, they can get too close or they can do up. The arms cause natural separation. Plus, when we're working with the offensive linemen, we really see that we're working on our chip blocks and a lot of different things. We can see actually where their hand placement is. You know, and every kid will tell you that their hand was supposed to be where it's supposed to be, but they lie, right? So this gives us a chance to really kind of check their fundamentals all the time. Um, the other thing about it is there are so much seven on seven and all those types of things going on for your back end people or your receivers or perimeter people. There really is a lot of stuff out there for linemen. So with this, you have the ability to use this in the off season. And our D linemen use this as part of their progression and their warm up. They do their footwork stuff and then they do their progression that we do in season. They can do that on their own. So they're working their hands every single day, which has always been, I feel, a great benefit because the more reps you can get as close to line as possible, the better your technique is and the better your fundamentals are. Um, it's funny because I get about 45 minutes of individual a day. So we use this a ton and then we get together with group and then we go to our team, team stuff. During team, these things are used because when you have a scout team, a lot of times they don't really respond to what the card says. A lot of times they're irritated, a lot of times they don't want to be there, and they're really not giving you a good look. Well, all they really have to do is stand there with these and just try and get in the right spot to give us a good look, but it allows our guys to go as fast as possible, which is what we want to do. So to start out the progression, I'll start out with some of the old line drills, then we'll go into D-line, linebackers, we consider running backs and receivers the same thing, and then just kind of what our DBs do with it. As far as offensive line play goes, uh, they start out and they start out doing their duck walk and everything else, but then they bring up, can I get a volunteer? Is that possible? Yes. Sure. So he is going to be a defensive lineman. So with our offensive lineman, they do a lot of, they just work on their punching. They don't put their hand in the dirt. So they'll do, just do a lot of their, their stepping. So they'll line up, they'll step, coach will call off the keys, and they're just doing their, their punch. They'll work on their punch. They wrap that out, and then they'll start working on their inside punch or their outside punch. So when they start out doing their stepping, and boom, making sure that they're getting that hand placement right on the target. Now, after a while, let you guys come up and kind of play with it a little bit. There's an actual breastplate right here that you can grab onto that simulates a pair of shoulder pads. So after they work both sides of their inside and outside punch, then they start working on chipping. And if you run a zone scheme or whatever scheme you're running as far as uh, offensive line play, we've got this, you know, we've got the shield up in front of them. We've got another guy over on the other side, and they're actually going to work on their overtake. So they've got a guy punching to the outside number or the chest. Now this guy's going to overtake. He rips off, and we've got another cat standing behind him with another one of the pads. That's the linebacker that he's going to chip to. So we're working all the games that they're doing on the offensive line as fast as possible because, again, they can rep with this, and there's that natural separation with the arms. So they can knock down or bring their hands up <coughs> or do whatever they have to do. So, thanks, so that is how the offensive line starts out with. So they progress from just a normal two-point to inside, outside, then chip and then they'll start getting into their pull games. And they'll actually line up, doesn't make a difference which one it is, but we'll have them work on, let's say we got one right here, he's coming down, he's coming around and pulling to the open for the linebacker. That's one of the ones they do, and they also do an outside game where down block, he's gonna either kick out we got a cat right here with the pad, or if he doesn't, uh, he's not in that area, he is going to pull up the field 
and either look for somebody that's there. So those are the games that we play, and this gives those guys that chance to get out there and rep. So they're repping constantly at full speed. So it's a great tool for the offensive lineman because you can really see where their targets are. You know, I want to make sure that that guy's head is on the outside over here or on the inside. Plus he's got this where he's got to stay underneath the arms. So it really works with pad level off as far as them pulling or whatever position they're going to be in. And that's just, you know, that's with the offensive line. Now, Tom, can you grab the, the muscles for me? Yeah. Because I'll go into that too. The other tool that we use, and I know they look like the hamburger helper mittens, but they're actually magnets. These are foam, rubber, and we put magnets on inside the wrist. They lock together like this. So for your footwork with your offensive lineman, we have found that you know, you're doing your old kick slide. This keeps their hands inside. Now they separate when you shear, but they stay, there's a lot of resistance right here. So when they're doing their kick slide, they got their hands inside, they got their pad level, and they're working on that. Well, what we found is we'll go live with these with the offensive linemen because they all hold. They're taught to hold. Talk to any offensive line coach. They teach their guys how to hold on the inside. It's the yin and the yang. Our offensive line coach is one of my best friends, but I hate him because all he teaches his guys how to do is hold. And they don't call it if it's outside here. Well, you slap these things on them, it's pretty difficult to hold. So what we've seen is their footwork has gotten much better because they can still do their kick slide, they can still move, but they can't hold. They still have to punch and get their hand position inside. So the offensive linemen do not like wearing them. Right, because they can't hold, but what we've seen is their footwork has improved greatly because of it. So Stanford had just picked up a pair of these, and there was a couple schools down in the Chicago area that have used it, and one of the offensive line coaches was telling my boss that after they started using the, the muzzles, his footwork, he was able to teach his guys things that they he could never teach them before. Didn't matter how much jump rope they did, how much mirror drill they did, he said this allowed them to keep their pad level down, to keep hand fighting, and they basically, they're going to hold every now and again, but it really cut down on them grabbing on and holding, because you can't hold anybody with those things on. So that's the offensive line progression that we use. Now on the defensive line, we start out with a six-point explosion drill. Basically what they are is they're on their knees. So they're going to start out on their knees, and all they're going to do is the defensive lineman is on his knees, the holder's right across from him, and they're going to come up and they're going to blow up right in the chest. And we kind of do the same thing that the offensive line do. We'll punch on the inside and we'll punch on the outside. And that's out of a six-point ex uh, explosion drill. And then we get him up and we put him in a two-point and we go through the same progression. So we're going to punch underneath the chest, then we're going to punch on the inside, and then we're going to punch on the outside. The next one we go to is they're back down on their knees, and what we're going to have them do is now we're going to start working on our rip techniques. We play a lot of slant and angle in our scheme. I don't know what our <coughs> schemes are, but one of the things that we stress for off our defensive linemen is learn your skill and learn your craft. I don't give a damn what the offensive line is going to do. I really don't care. We prepare the kids for what they're going to see, but our philosophy is if you do your technique and your fundamentals better than they do, it doesn't matter what they run. Because our job is to get in, get off, and get on, and get on to the ball. So we don't want to mess with these guys too much. So we're doing a lot of striking in close quarters. So coach, I need to borrow you again. And we very rarely ever go to a head up position, but we always start everything in a head up, and then we'll move to the left and then to the right. We move to the left first because we want to make sure that they're not natural going to their left, so we want to make sure that we get them to be natural going to their left where it's uncomfortable. We like to put our kids in uncomfortable positions so they know how it feels when they're into it. So after we go through the six point on myself, then we'll come to the two point. So basically, if the kid is on this shoulder, we're gonna work this and already tell them there are three points of striking. One, wrist, two, elbow, three, shoulder. Your lever is much looser down here than it is up here. So we tell our kids right, right off the bat, I want you to strike at about a one and a half, which means they're going to take their offhand and on the staff of the ball, because we do everything with movement, ball goes, boom. They're hitting it right there. Now, what we can see is, as, as I'm watching them, because we go through this and we wrap fast. 
So I, there's no switching back and forth because all the kids got to do is hand a dummy to the other kid and then we can go again. So once they step, you know, boom, right there. All right, hey, you're a little higher at that elbow. We don't want them getting up in here. This doesn't move very far. We want them to strike where the lever's loose, okay? So we start on the outside, then we'll go to the inside and we'll work a rip or what we call a snake technique. So if they're working the rip, we want to make sure they flip their hips, boom, pad level's nice and low. Now they're going to come through with their rip. Or if they're going to snake, same thing. We want to make sure that we're hitting it at the extent of the, uh, of the joint, boom, and then they're going to come over the top of the pad and be able to do their snaking. So we rep that over and over again. After we do that, that's a great question. When we're done with that, then we go into our, you know, taking on double teams and then also taking on trap blocks. And a great thing about this is, with this, I can stand there or I can have a kid stand there and I can see if we're taking on a, let's say we're taking on a trap and we're squeezing. <coughs> when we're squeezing, I want to make sure that that chip, that elbow, or forearm is going right underneath this guy's arms. All right? So if the guy comes down on a trap block, he's right here, we're going to squeeze on the inside, he's going to blow this up. If he's got that natural extension, if he's too high, he's going to be above the arms. If he's in perfect position, he's going to be nice and low, so it makes us check for pad level. On a long trap, I don't know, we teach a, a wrong arm technique, so the guy's basically backed off the ball a little bit. He's going to start coming down, now our outside guy is going to be coming in on a wrong arm technique. I'm going to tell him, I want you to rip underneath this arm. And the old, you know, the technique used to be you want to rip right through that guy's leg, through his knee. What we're telling our guys is, I want you to rip underneath this arm to spill this to the outside. So we've got a short trap on one side, we've got a long trap on the other side, and the kids alternate as they go around. So you can get through a lot of your technique, and we can do... The same thing every single day. It starts out with bags, and then we start going through our six point, and we start going through our progression. I don't even really have to be at practice because the kids know what we do every single day. And we stress pad level and violence. That's the main thing I stress every single day. You can't be real violent if you're standing up. You gotta make sure you're lower than the other guy. This gives me the ability to adjust my pad level with the kids. So, we get a chance to work on those fundamentals and techniques every day. So after we get done working on our run game stuff, then we go on the pass. Pass rush is pretty much the same thing that we just did before of our two-point position. We're going to work the rip, we're going to work the snake, and then we're going to work a one-arm post, and then maybe some arm bar stuff. We do a lot of stuff where we're grabbing underneath. So let's say the offensive lineman's got position with his hands right here. We'll do stuff with, we want to make sure they get to an edge. They're going to grab this inside joint right here at the elbow and pull. Now, if you're doing that live with a kid, they're going to pop someone's elbow. I don't care if they pop someone's elbow on a Friday night. I just want them to be my own guys. So we do a lot of our hand-to-hand -hand stuff with these just because they can rep faster and the risk of injury is minimal. I know I've had a couple kids get hit in the eye, you know, through their helmet. So, but, and it's not to say it's 100% injury free, but it does happen, but it allows them to go full speed, which is, what, which is what I want them to do. So once we go through our pass, our basic pass progression, then we get into some drills that uh, you'll be able to see on the video or on the, uh, on the website. The first drill that we do is what we call a circle, and you guys have, a lot of you guys have the big rims, right? You got the big hula hoop. You might have the big hula hoop you can use just about anything, but basically it's just a big piece of rubber. Go to your local fire department and ask them if they have an old hose. They'll give you an old hose, you can cut it to length, 12 foot wide, and make a circle. We put a guy on the inside with the bag. <coughs> so he's on the inside right here with the bag, and our D lineman is on the outside. One of the things that we stress with our D lineman is I want you to take an edge. Every kid that plays defensive line, somehow, I don't know why it is, they always mysteriously go to the middle. It's like a moth to a flame. I don't get it. I've been coaching D-line for a long time. I was a, a D-lineman. I don't understand why they always go to the middle of the guy. It baffles me. This allows me to say, hey, listen, I need you to get on the outside edge, or I need you to get on the inside edge. Don't ever take a man head up. So what the ring is helping us with 
as we, I'll blow the whistle and they go for 30 seconds. Now that's a long time. We try and work to 30 seconds. We start out in the middle of our five days of contact and it's a workout and it's difficult because they've got to go around this ring as fast as they can and they're leaning. But now they're getting resistance as they're going. So what it shows them, it shows me, that guy is really working the edge. If he's trying to work the middle, he's going to pass out. If he's working this edge, as he's coming around, I'll make sure that they get a couple revolutions and then I'll pull the whistle and now they have to switch. Now they're working their other hand. So they're working the edge, they're working the edge, and they're beating the hell out of the outside shoulder and that outside arm. That whistle blows, now they've got to come back the other way and work the other arm. So what it's teaching kids is, in that transition, they have to have the ability to use both hands. They have to have the ability to switch and change direction. Because that's exactly what football is. It's about changing direction. Right? You might start out on a slant going one way, suddenly the ball bounces the other way. Now you've got to change position and go. So we do a ton of work with changing direction and you being able to use both hands. So this ring is used every day. The other one that we do with the D-line is what we call the figure eight. And I don't know if you can see it, but we've got a guy holding pad right here. And I'm not a very good artist, at all, so I apologize. I kind of looks like SpongeBob. Another guy with a pad right here. So what happens is the D line is going to start out at an inside position. So I'll tell him, all right, I want you on the left or the right, whatever way you want to go. But we're going to start on the inside. He is going to do a move. I don't care what move he does. He picks the move that he wants to do. So he does. Let's say he does an outside rip. He rips around. Now I want him to do another move. Pick it. Don't care what it is because you have to be able to, to work. And what happens with kids is they fall into a move that they really like. Your shorter guys might like to rip. Your taller guys might like to snake. To me, it doesn't make a difference. Whatever you feel comfortable with. But you have to have the ability to switch up while you're going through the progression of trying to get to the ball. So we start on the outside here. Now we're coming on the inside. He executes that move right here. Now he's going to come back around. And this gives us two shots for your guys to come around the back side of the quarterback. So he's going to do a move right here where he's going to club that arm. Now he's going to fit and finish. He sees that quarterback now, and all our guys are doing are just literally standing with the bag. <coughs> so as he comes around on that move, he's going to come around, back through. Here's the outside arm of the quarterback. So what we want them to do is secure the tackle and then tomahawk on the outside arm with the ball. So we start out doing that and we rep that probably four or five times. Each kid reps it four or five times. Now all these can get done in a relative short period of time because we're not switching guys. I mean we're moving guys back and forth and there's a rotation to it but that gives us the chance to get a lot of our individual work done at full speed. And that's our progression with the D-line. Um, any questions so far on anything? Coach, when you're doing the ring, are you just having them work constant pass rush moves? Constant. Oh, okay. constant. All right. And it goes a long time. Sure. They hate it. Sure. I have a 6'4 kid who thinks he's a basketball player, but he's really going to be a hell of a defensive end. He looks for every opportunity to get out of that drill every single day. But she doesn't. And he's getting a lot better. But it's, 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 it's pretty taxing on a kid. You really got to move. So, now with your linebackers, again, it doesn't make a difference what you teach. We teach pretty much avoid. We've got to, our linebackers are fairly small and quick. We really don't want them taking on anything in the hole or going to get splattered. And the old technique was, okay, we want you to pull the guy up, or we want you to make sure you pick an edge and get to the outside. What I love about this with our linebackers is they can go through all their shed drills and whatever they want to do. So we have them lined up. We'll have an offensive line lined up. They pick their targets and they know where they got to go. Ball goes this way. First guy's going to attack. He attacks the outside shoulder. We make sure that he, you know, we're going to be able to see where his, his head position is and everything else. Next guy's going to be the bubble guy. He's going to be the one that comes up and cleans up. And then we've got a guy in the backside for cutback. So the other thing that we do with the guys holding the bags is either I'll go this, which means high hat, which means pass, or I'll just go like this, which means drive or zone. And our guys get a chance to wrap with this 
and it really helps as far as the, the guys that are working, because I don't have to grab a group of offensive linemen that aren't doing anything. I can use the linebackers that we have to hold bags. So those offensive line are working on their offensive technique, our guys are working on their defensive technique. And their defensive guys to begin with. So we don't want to make that guy an offensive lineman because that's not what those positions. So that helps us with that. The other thing is we work with the linebackers on is in their drops. We'll literally have targets for them where these guys are standing and we'll throw the ball at the guy holding the bag, which can lead to hilarity with these guys trying to catch a ball coming in. But what we're doing with it is those linebackers are coming in and they're basically working on their rate technique. So if the ball's coming in, backside, make sure you're secure, and they're going to reach that far arm to make sure they knock it down. It's the same technique that we use with our defensive backs. We do the exact same thing with our DBs. There are several targets that are standing out in the field. The DBs are going to be coming in. They go out of their back pedal, and if we're playing zone, they're going to be coming up, and they're going to make sure that they're getting that far arm, or they're coming up underneath to knock the ball away. So, a lot of this stuff is done before uh, we go to our inside run game with the linebackers and then when they go to seven on seven because we do a lot of inside run a group of linebackers will be with us then we'll switch and the second group of linebackers comes down the same thing with the dbs so they're using it for all that type of technique so let's see where we're at here as far as running and backs and receivers go the uh, running backs and receivers are trained the same way, even though they're getting a lot of pass out the backfield, but a lot of it is used for their stock blocking and techniques like that. So if you're a receiver coach, you're gonna really like what happens with this because after they go through their releases, and they're doing the same releases that they, they do, but they're just doing it with this. So there's inside release, outside release, uh, stock blocking as far as inside or outside hand position and head position, and um, any type of thing, we actually fit them up on a receiver. So the receiver standing here, we have two guys on each side. He's gonna, when that ball's coming, they're gonna jam that receiver. The other one that we do is we actually put the, the bag on the receiver. Quarterback, backup quarterback is gonna throw the ball, and this, the guy holding the bag, is gonna come up and down or try and rattle that guy as the ball's coming in. So we teach a lot of ball security with it as well too. And the same thing for the running backs as well. Um, and DBs, one of the things that the DBs do when they start out every day is they work on their back pedal, but the first thing they do before they work on their back pedal, they work on a shed drill. Because we're seeing so much perimeter blocking now, we want to make sure that as they're going through it, that they're getting rid of this guy so they can get their hands on him. You know we want them to stay on him a little bit more farther down the field. We want to make sure that they can get off when they have to get off with extension. So, um, any questions at all so far? The other one we use with our DBs, they use these. So they don't keep them attached, but they use them for their either back pedal for their hand fighting. So as the DB is coming out of his back pedal, guy makes a break, he comes in, he can either jam, but as the ball's coming in, he can still do his rake technique on the back side. Now, obviously, we want them to catch the ball if they're in position, but the main thing we want them to do is not hold. So, because you're always going to end up getting a holding call. It's not the NFL where it's a spot fall, but we still want to give up any yardage on the third and long. So, <coughs> any other questions so far? I apologize, I'm coming off of cold. Nothing? Um, there is a, a ton of video on our website as well as YouTube. Um, you can go in. It was a lot of it was filmed at Next Level down in Milwaukee, where JJ trains. Um, you can see a lot of that video that's on there. We've had a really, really great response from a lot of special teams coaches collegiately that are using these during their special teams time during practice. Because it gives them, instead of a guy just standing there, it actually gives them a chance to go a little bit closer to full speed and get those reps that they need. And obviously defensive line guys like it and offensive line guys like it too as well. 
So if you have a chance, you can go on the website and take a look. Um, if you want to come up and play with them a little bit, you can see they weigh about 12 pounds. They have three points of contact in the back. So a lot of times I'll just grab one and I'm watching because I know what I want to do with my guys as far as making sure that they're working that edge <coughs> and that they're being extremely violent with their hands. So that's it, fellas. That's all I got. What do they go for? Uh, right now, the special for Wisconsin coaches is uh, 350 if you buy three or more, then there's obviously a break. Uh, we did run a special this year for uh, teams that made the playoffs. We give you a little bit of a, a cash break on that. I think it gets down to about 325. So you can buy the model with the shoulder pads, which would be that, that 350 to 325 range, or you can buy that model for 265. So I like the ones with the shoulder pads, uh, but. You know, I've used the other ones too. So, and the muzzles go for 65 bucks. So, they're a pretty nice deal. Um, we are coming out within the spring, we'll have it at the clinic. Uh, we are, we've developed one that is a foam, it's a foam body, and it's gonna have a head on it. Now that's more for MMA and law enforcement, because we don't want anybody touching the head <laughs> at all with their technique and stuff like that. But that full one also is going to be able to, we're going to have a sled mount. We've had a, a real big request for sled mount pads with arms, which is very similar to probably what Rogers has. They kind of have one that does have arms and stuff like that. But the sled mount one is really going to give you the, you know, the ability to, to get some more reps and stuff like that. I like the freestanding one because I want to manipulate it and keep harassing the guys as far as their hand placement. And their pad level. That's my big thing is pad level because I want to make sure my guys are real low to the ground. So obviously, one of those for all the positions. If you had just one of those, that you'd be uh, fighting over it. So what's the optimum amount of? You know, I think I think four. We've got six at Greenfield. Well, I work for the company, so we've got a couple with all the shoulder pads, and then we have four with the pads. And I would probably venture a guess that we're probably going to order a couple more. Um, I think four is a great number because you've got two on offense and two on defense. And if you're communicating well enough with your guys, I mean, I, I don't use mine until the offensive linemen are done. But I also have a couple more pads that I can use. You know, and a lot of the stuff that we do is I'll grab two pads and then the linebacker will, you know, hey, Pat, I need those pads, you know, now. You know, so that we do a lot of sharing. So I think four is great, two on each side of the ball. Um, to me, that's the, the that's the right number. Obviously, more the merrier, you know. But the big thing that I that we do is we use them during our team time. So we'll identify if we've got three on offense and three on defense. Those three linemen are going to have those pads, especially if we're seeing a three man front and stuff like that. Because as far as the linebackers and stuff going team. Um, it's more important for our, our defensive linemen to get a feel of what the, what's in front of them and for the offensive linemen too as well, as far as them sliding off on their chips and their traps. So I think for you, you're, you're in a good position. Um, and then with the muzzles, the other thing that I like about this is we got guys using them in the off season. And I kind of alluded to this before. You got seven on seven, you got all other type of stuff for your perimeter guys. Our line guys really don't have anything. So, I don't coach them. These things are in the weight room. They grab them and they know what to do with them. And it's, it's really, before you even start to practice, there's about a 15, 20 minute session where the kickers are warming up, quarterbacks are warming up. These guys will grab the pads and they'll just go through their hand fighting stuff. You know, so they're working their moves. You know, and it's nice because, you know, I'm a big proponent of using martial arts and all that type of stuff. We introduce our kids to a lot of, uh, uh, taekwondo, judo, boxing, there's a lot of stuff that we use in the off season that they're working their hands and their hips all the time. You know, this allows them to do that without hurting another kid. So, which is the main goal. The other thing is with the WI putting in, what is it now, 60 minutes of contact per week? Is that what, it's 20 minutes per day or something like that? Or I believe it's 60 it's minutes a week. So you've got, uh, our practices, uh, we know Monday is an install day, basically Tuesday and Wednesday are work days, three days, pre 
Thursday's pregame and then Friday, we, you know, we go. So a lot of our stuff using these does not constitute as contact. So you have unlimited contact by using pads. You know, and with uh, with the arms and the separation, that's that's one of my pet peeves is making sure that I don't care if it's a DB, linebacker, running back, it always seems to me that kids get too close. These right away has that natural boundary for separation for them. So I mean, I can remember still, you walk up to the pad and you put your arm on the pad to make sure that you're far enough away. You know, all that's already here. So they're portable, you can take them any part of the field. Um, durable, there is a one year warranty with them. Uh, the only, we've only had one break where someone actually broke the arm off. I don't know what they were doing with it, I have no idea, but they actually broke the arm off. We replaced the pad. Is that Where JJ? Yeah, huh? Probably JJ. It was actually in Sussex, which is close to JJ. It was John DeMotto. Sussex had purchased eight of them. And I get a phone call two days later. He goes, Pat, we need to replace them. I go, are you kidding me? And he goes, yeah, uh, the, the arm broke off. So we took it back to our research and development department. I mean, the testing that is done right now, I think we're at 12,000 reps on the full one that we're going to be bringing out. And when that gets to 30,000 reps, then we'll be ready to go. So, and we have not had a failure with that yet with the springs. So, any other questions? Well, the other thing is this too, we're very transparent. If you come up with something as far as drill, I mean basketball team, here's one of the things. This is great for low post for basketball teams. <coughs> for wrestling, for hand placement, or you know, for grabbing on arms and stuff like that. So there are multiple uses for it. So, we're finding lots of different and unique ways of using it all the time. And if you want to put it in your, your uh, car or truck for the carpooling, I mean, that works real well, too. So, Save your stool at a bar, too. Yeah, it? there you go. And actually, I do have a picture with this next to Bob Highland that springs with a glass of Jameson right next to it. So. But that's it, fellas. That's all I got. If you have any more questions or you want to take a look at it a little bit more, uh, Tom was nice enough to let us set up a booth outside. And then you guys will be getting an email from me just thanking you for coming to listen to the talk. Uh, he's going to post this on YouTube and then go to our website, CarlsCoastSports.com, and you can see all the videos that are, that are linked on there already. So, thank you.